Welcome to the introduction to the mystic healing uh, classes. Um, a mystic healer is a person who is in a way a healer but in a much more sensitive way than a regular healer. So there are many systems of healing. You have of course the Reiki, the reconnection healing, uh, Reiki, theta wave healing, shamanism. Um, but all these yeah, types of healing, they all use the same cosmic laws. They're all built upon the same foundation. And within every system of healing, there are just four techniques which are being used. Either you add energy, you move energy, you remove energy, or you transform energy. And in different healing systems, there is a different different emphasis. Some emphasize the giving of energy, some the removal, some the moving, and some the transformation. The big difference between all the different healing modalities is what type of energy you will be working with. And there is quite a lot of choice. According to the Ayurveda, the uh, Indian uh, system of uh, health and healing, there are about 1200 different energies which the human energy body is composed of and they're all interconnected. So if you start working with one energy, all the other energies will reconnect, settle in a new pattern. So in one way it doesn't matter where you start because whatever uh, part of the body or the energy body you will touch will create a ripple effect so the rest of the energy body will also become transformed. Um, but depending on the personal mix, uh, how a person is made up, uh, certain energies will have yeah, a stronger effect or a less strong effect or even an adverse effect from certain types of healing or from being stimulated in a certain method. And this is what I really want to get into uh, in our courses. So I have here my lovely friend who is going to help me to uh, introduce you to some of the concepts what, uh, which we will be working with. So instead of what people normally do, for instance if I'm a Reiki healer, I would charge myself up with Reiki energy. But once I'm full with this Reiki energy, I can feel this energy wanting to burst out of my hands. I would make contact with the person and give my Reiki energy to her. We're going to do it slightly differently now. So instead of me deciding uh, what would be the best energy to use or what is my modality of to give, I'm going to use my sensitivity to first get to know the person I am going to heal. So instead of filling my energies, I empty my hands. The hands have seven chakras, one on each fingertip, one in the center of the hand and one on the base of the hand. So I open the hand chakras and I have no intention of either giving energy or taking energy. This is just like any meditation where you just try to get to know um, the object of your meditation in the same meditative state when I make contact. So I empty my mind empty myself emotionally, empty myself energetically, make sure I'm grounded. Then I start the process of making contact. And you can of course make contact in various ways. You can start poking and prodding and provoking reactions. But you can also allow the person to show themselves. So you just offer the space for the person to express herself. And the energies which want to come into my hands, those are the energies which will come into my hands. And the main element I'm feeling here are the fire elements. So these are basically transformative energies. So apparently there is a process of creation and destruction going on and that process itself 
is under some pressure so these energies are kind of escaping as I create an opening in the energy body. So by just feeling what energies are coming to me uh, it gives a bit of a diagnosis. So there is a fire energy which is moving outwards so there's a lot of it available but maybe yes or maybe no it is not flowing completely as it should. So now that the energy has introduced itself, we can see what the energy is really asking for. I can start careful experimentation to see how the energy reacts. So instead of me dictating the healing, like going to a certain place and giving certain energies, I'm just going to make energies available to the person for them to heal themselves with. So again, I will make contact, feel the fire, and now I can provide it with different types of energy, which I feel welling up in myself. So in my heart is a sense of harmony, a sense of balance. And I try to see what my heart would like to do. What is the impulse coming from my heart to give? It will feel like a, a calming energy, a lot of green, I see, a lot of earthiness. So I open myself up and allow this energy to fill me, to come into me and flow out. Basically, how much is flowing out of which hand is not something I determine. I just allow it to happen for the moment. So notice that on my right hand, the flow stops quite quickly, but on my left hand, which is closer to the head, the flow is still going quite strongly. So apparently this area needs more than this area. So I will move my other hand also over here. So the way as I'm going along, providing energy, so the sort of request changes. So the energies I was sending out in the beginning were more calming. Now the energy becomes a bit more strong, a bit more structured, uh, but also in a way more, uh, more soft, more feminine. So the energy I'm providing now is about 70% in a very yin, in a very soft state. And about 30% in a very young, very focused state. you've provided some energy it's important to of course know is the effects what you in intended to be and this is always a tricky part when you're performing a healing um, because sometimes pain or complaints become worse sometimes they become less um, because ultimately what we're trying to do is to help the person move forward in their process and it can be that they're on an upward process like they're getting less and less pain they're healing they're getting balanced again but it can also be that in their process they need to go down to realize something to stop something to um, yeah and then when you're by helping them they're actually going down more quickly so we're not orchestrating the process itself like m forcing people to move only up but helping them to move more quickly along their own path. 
the other thing we're doing as mystic healers is also to try to balance the person because a person can go through lots of peaks and highs and lows and have a path like this but providing some guidance uh, some interpretation for what is going on some help with meditation and reflection you hope that the person doesn't have to go that deep before realizing the lesson before being ready to change um, so we want to make the lows a little bit less low so that people can spend more time in higher vibrations in a higher consciousness and ultimately you cannot know whether a person is doing well by just listening to whether they're in pain or they're sleeping poorly or having other complaints um, you have to find out like are they in harmony is what they're experiencing what they want to experience um, not so much on an ego level but on a spiritual level and this requ requires the development of the heart of a realization of harmony a realization of balance so if all goes well my patient should be a little bit more balanced now and so I'll have another try so again I open my hands empty them go into meditative state make contact again and okay. what I am looking for or hoping for is that now the energies which will come into my hand will not be predominantly fire it's more balanced more of a mix so that the person is expressing themselves fully instead of just partially because whenever there's a problem whenever there's a disbalance then that energy will try to balance itself and it will call out to the cosmos in this case also the healer help me balance me see me take me away from me from here or support me And what I'm noticing now is that indeed like the fire element is still quite strong, quite dominant. But now there's also more of the other element. It's just the air element is still relatively weak. The fire element is still relatively strong. So after this first bout of healing, I notice there are still disbalances, um, which could be healed, which could be addressed. So now I can go for uh, a second stage. I could also interrupt the healing um, to ask the client, like, what have you experienced? What has changed? How are you now doing in your process? In this case, I will just continue the healing. And also for myself, I can start to think. So there's too much fire. The fire was a little bit unbalanced because there was not enough earth now there's more earth there's not enough air so what you see is there is a strong impulse to change but the earth is often a kind of structure a kind of stability um, which is required for a person to feel safe to go into the process um, if there's too much happening if there's too much stress if there's too much chaos uh, then it is very difficult for a person to really move forward in the process. Now that we have provided, at least energetically, some more stability, some more continuity, um, the air is important. And the air is very much about planning, about mm -hmm. seeing the big picture, the strategy, the ultimate goal. Um, so there's an impulse there, like I need to change. Um, and on a subconscious level it is probably realized what changes are necessary but it hasn't like formed into a different mindset yet or in a clear view of yeah what to change into what the future should be so often when there's a lack of an air element it often also indicates the need for knowledge the need for insight so we will see now what exactly the request is which is being made of the mystic healer yeah but 
um, feeling here is a pattern which you will learn to recognize as you work more with uh, with clients it's a pattern which is relatively common um, what I feel is that on the one hand the person is asking for affirmation like uh, give me the confidence that I'm a good person, I'm good as I am, I am functional as I am, I'm okay, I'm accepted. Um, so this is one request. And the other request, which is being made simultaneously, is like, tell me how I should be, what is my potential, how should I grow, how should I develop myself. And this is often a different, a difficult situation to be in, to have both the desire to be accepted as you are, but also to have the desire to be guided in your change and to transform yourself. So in a way you're at the same time wanting to be accepted and also wanting to be, well, in a way not accepted or be told this is better. Often this pattern arises from uh, a damaged self-image or a lack of um, self-acceptance or, or confidence and uh, because of this yeah, lack of acceptance or fear the person often yeah, doesn't dare to move into the process because they have no faith that it will be okay they will be supported the process they will go into which will have uncertain results will have positive results so they need an affirmation um, about the future uh, in a way and also an affirmation that they are okay so the important thing to get out of this dilemma is also how you focus your energy if i focus my energy on very much the incarnated person the incarnated personality uh, then you tend to go into a deadlock because um, if on the one hand you're okay on the other hand you need to change then it becomes very confusing what to do like, why do I need to change? I thought I was okay. But if you focus it on a slightly different level and say, like, your spirit is okay, it knows what it is doing, uh, it's selected and it is creating good circumstances for you to transform, to grow, and you will get the lessons you need, you will get the support you need. Um, and on a spiritual level, there is this confidence. Then it is more easy for... Uh, the person who, when they are realizing they're in their uh, spiritual awareness and they're realizing the situation from the spiritual perspective, then they can more easily uh, transform the lower parts of themselves, the ego parts of themselves. And here it comes down to vibration. So we need to give the person a feeling, a sense of support of not being alone but we have to give it differently for the spirit or for the ego and now it comes to a little bit of vibration so again i make contact with my hand and the first level you make contact with is generally the level where you are at also so it's usually just on the ego level so i feel now the stress of the ego, the you know, paranoia of the ego, will everything be okay, will I manage? So we want to step beyond that, so go in a slightly higher vibration, yourself, and by going in, tuning into a higher vibration, you're in a way tuning into a different s signal, a different channel of energies which are coming from your client. And here I feel like the anxiety of the spirit. And the anxiety of the spirit is also wondering, like, am I strong enough? Am I good enough? Um, can I deal with it? And um, there's a kind of a realization also that by trying to force things, yeah, things get worse. So here we want to provide the spirit with some support. So I'm opening myself up to energies also from the spiritual level. And communicating. 
education on a spiritual level, forming alliances, being part of spirit groups, realizing connections, karmic connections, so that her spirit may also become more aware of her own karma, of her own karmic connections, of the spirit groups which support her, of her own guides which are there also to help her in the process. Things move a lot more quickly on the spirit level than on the physical level. So I'm noticing that already this very short period of support. Already creating a shift in the attitude of the spirit. only when the spirit changes it can guide the change process of the incarnated consciousness of the ego because the ego is ultimately a reflection of the spirit and the history and circumstances which the incarnated self has been in but if there is no good guide then the growth of the incarnated consciousness is uh, usually quite random or chaotic. But if the spirit is more strong, more aware, more sure, it is better able to take control over the evolution process which the person is going through. So now again we can feel how the harmony is by going into meditative state and feeling if there are still requests coming from the client. that now indeed it feels quite calm and balanced. So I hope you enjoyed this introductory lesson from Mr. Key. I hope you will join the course and enjoy the other lessons I will be posting on YouTube. Thank you.